In this problem, we're considering kinematics, uh, vertical motion with constant acceleration provided by the acceleration due to gravity of the Earth. We have a two kilogram ball. It's attached to the bottom of a helicopter. The engine is going to be released at a certain point. Uh, before the ball is released, the helicopter is moving upward at a constant speed, 15 meters per second, could call it a velocity. The ball is 75 meters above the ground when the ball is released. After the ball is released, the helicopter decides to move faster. It goes up, upward to 20 meters per second. We're going to ignore air resistance. We're going to ignore any push on the ball from the air from the helicopter blades. Um, this is a introductory physics problem, so we'll ignore the complications of uh, air uh, force on the ball. And <clears throat> first thing we want to do is calculate the maximum height of the ball above the ground. Then we're going to calculate the time after release for the ball to get to its maximum height. We're going to let the motion of the ball continue and eventually hit the ground. And we want to know the velocity of the ball when it hits the ground. So I would highly recommend that you make a sketch of the situation as you work physics problems. So uh, just a rough sketch, you can recognize a helicopter there, a ball that's 75 meters above the ground. I'm going to let the ground be the position of y equals zero. y is going to be my vertical coordinate. I'm going to work this problem with up being the positive direction, up being the positive direction. So the acceleration is going to be minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Acceleration due to gravity would be a minus number. Um, the ball starts here 75 meters above the ground. Its velocity is positive. It's going upward. It shares the motion of the helicopter. Um, so the ball is moving at 15 meters per second at the time is released. The two kilograms up here, that's extraneous information. It could be any mass object, we get the same result. And the 20 meters per second for the helicopter, that's extraneous information. The ball is our system after it leaves the helicopter we don't care what the helicopter does um, so we're considering the maximum height how far is it above the ground we know at the top when the ball stops going upward and before it starts going downward at that instant the velocity will be zero meters per second and this will be the sort of end velocity for the motion that's just right in here. We're considering the ball going upward after it's released to some maximum height. We know it will go upward. Gravity doesn't make it immediately go down. It continues upward for some distance that we're going to calculate. The initial position of the ball, y sub naught in the equations, would be 75 meters. What we don't know is the time. In fact, we're going to calculate that later. So in the kinematic equations, we need to make use of an equation that has um, v's and y's, but it does not have time, it does not have time. And that is what I'll call the fourth equation of the kinematic equations. So we're going to use this uh, equation to tell us the answer for uh, how much higher the ball does rise. And, or what's the maximum height above the ground? We want, um, it could work it either way, but we're going to solve for height above the ground. We're going to tell, want this total y distance from ground level. Um, so in that fourth equation, we need the final velocity for our motion interval squared, that's a zero squared. We need to square the initial velocity. And then we have two in the equation times the acceleration, minus 9.8 meters per second squared. And then how far we are at the maximum height above the ground. And then our starting height, minus 75 meters. And I'm going to drop the units after this. We have the proper standard uh, metric units, so I'm not going to keep track of them after this. First thing I'm going to do is square the 15. That will give me 225. Uh, my unknown is here. This number, I'm going to move it over to the left side. So 225, I have to subtract 225 from both sides. Again, 225 is a result of 15 squared. 
So minus 225 equals the 2 times minus 9.8, that would be minus 19.6. And then we still have y minus 75 meters inside here. Um, so what do you think the next step should be? Should divide both sides by minus 19.6. Uh, that's going to get rid of this minus sign and leave us with 11.48 approximately <coughs> meters over on the left side. And you could do more detail in keeping track of the units, but uh, that's what we end up with. When we, do, we have meters squared per second squared divided by meters per second squared. So we'll have meters. And then we have y minus 75 meters. So this 11.48, that's the additional distance the ball goes upward to the top of the motion, uh, the distance it goes upward after it's released. The total distance from the ground will now add 75 to both sides, and I come up with 86.5 meters, roughly, is this maximum height above the ground. The next thing we want to calculate, what's the time required for the ball to reach the maximum height after it's released. <coughs> so we want the uh, um, the time from right here to at the top of the motion. And again, if we would consider what we know and what we don't know, we don't know the time yet, but we want to calculate it. So we don't want to use equation four. That does not have the time variable in it. Which of these three, one, two, and three, would you select? We know the final velocity, we know the initial velocity, we know the numbers for the position. We could use equation two, we could use equation three, but the simplest one is the first equation. Um, so we know the velocity at the top is zero, we know our 15 meters per second starting, we've got a value for the acceleration. So I'm going to use that, that first equation. And again, the Velocity at the top was zero, so zero meters per second, equals the initial velocity, 15 meters per second. <coughs> initial for this, again, this interval of motion from when the ball is released to when it gets to the top. And then we have to add the acceleration number, minus 9.8 meters per second squared. And the time to go to the top, the upward part of this motion, so we reach the top. Well, I'm going to subtract 15 from both sides. I'm going to divide by minus 9.8. So I'll put this up without uh, the units. So minus 15 on both sides. These plus 15 and minus 15 adds to zero. And minus 9.8, time to go up. We divide by minus 9.8 on both sides. And we find that 1.53 seconds is the time for the ball to reach its maximum height after it's been released uh, from the helicopter. The last uh, thing we want to do is we're going to let the ball's motion continue and we want to know its velocity when the ball hits the ground, just the instant that it hits the ground. We're not uh, wanting to know, um, we're not going to take into account force of the ground on the ball. Um, we want the instant of impact and what is that speed, or velocity, I should say, of S for velocity. So to do this, there are various ways that we could do this. Um, I am going to use this fourth equation again. We're in search of this final velocity. Now, this is a new problem, not going upward to the top. So we have to change our thinking just a little bit. We're starting at the top. This is going to be the sub naught uh, location for our variables and then we're going down to ground level. So we're going to have some unknown velocity. We have zero velocity for the start. And again, we have uh, minus 9.8 for the acceleration. At the end, we're at um, zero meters. And we're starting, our y not position is 86.5 meters that we worked out in um, up above in part A. So I'm going to use that fourth equation and again here, we have uh, the following numbers to put into that. Again, that fourth equation with the squares on the velocity. So we have v squared equals 0 squared plus 2 
minus 9.8 meters per second squared. And the end y value is zero. We're landing at ground level, y equals zero. And we're starting at 86.5 meters. Again, that was uh, determined in, in part A. So there's that fourth equation with the velocity squared. So you can see that you simply have to put these into your calculator. 2 times minus 9.8 times minus 86.5. And um, when you do that, hopefully we'll be in agreement that V squared has the value roughly 1695.4. We take a square root of both sides and we find that the velocity is 41.2 meters per second. That's what shows on your calculator. That's not quite right. If you look at your drawing and think about this problem, we had the ball at the top of the motion at rest for an instant, then it's coming down, hitting ground level. We're working this problem with uh, upward being the positive direction, and I've asked for the velocity. When you take a square root of this number, you get positive 41.2. You have to look at your drawing and realize that the ball is going downward, so we have to insert a minus sign there. You have to insert a minus sign. There are two numbers that satisfy this equation, plus 41.2 and minus 41.2. If you square both of those, you get this same result. But look at your drawing to determine whether your velocity is plus or minus. In this case, it is a negative. So there we've used the kinematic equations to find the maximum height, the time involved, and the velocity at ground level. So if you want some more practice problems like this, if you um, just searching found that partic this particular video, um, lectures and example problems, physics.gpclements.com, astronomy.gpclements.com for those subject areas. And I uh, hope you keep working practice problems.